So we will go straight into the first class of biomolecules, which are proteins. And so as I have said in the introduction, proteins are known as the building blocks of life. And that's because they have many different functions. For example, we have proteins that serve as storage proteins. For example, hemoglobin stores oxygen. Or the transfer form of that, myoglobin transfers oxygen. Or for example, we have structural proteins or that which makes up uh, many of our tissues such as for the skin we have collagen and elastin. We even have catalytic proteins which are enzymes and which we will discuss on later and many more. So there are many various functions for proteins. One thing we would like to know about proteins structurally is that they are very structurally complex and they are more complex than the three other biomolecules carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids simply because their building components have many variations all right and so these building blocks of life apparently have their own building blocks also and so as I have said their monomeric units are known as amino acids so these are the building blocks or the monomers that when you weave them up together you get a protein or sometimes you call uh, you can call it also a polypeptide all right a polypeptide chain all right so amino acids are the ones that make these and so if you look at this and you would ask what is the meaning of an amino acid if you have some uh, interest in organic chemistry when you look at these two words you could already get two functional groups using this word amino obviously we have an amino group which is this one all right nh2 attached to a parent chain any parent chain and acid well, we get that from carboxylic acids and the functional group of carboxylic acids again is the carboxyl group cooh all right so if we get this interpretation if we draw anything with an amino group in a carboxyl group such as this how about something like this we already have an amino acid however things like this are not really important in biochemistry this means that there are just some amino acids which are relevant for our discussion all right of proteins and in fact we have 20 of them so what is the thing that's common in these 20 amino acids and why are they why are these the more significant ones first thing these ones are the amino acids that can be encoded by our nucleic acids. Remember that I told you that nucleic acids are the ones that code for proteins. So if in our so if in our database in our nucleic acids we cannot find the amino acids, then we cannot expect them to show up in our proteins. So we have only 20 amino acids that are encoded for by our nucleic acids. So we came up with these. Now what's structurally is common in them so to answer that question I, i'll put a small descriptor in addition to just the word amino acid and i'll specify that these are alpha amino acids if we go back to organic chemistry we know that an alpha carbon is a carbon wherein the functional group is attached so if we have an alpha carbon here we should assume that the functional group would be attached here but when we say alpha amino acid, and since we have two functional groups, the amino and the carboxyl group, I would like to specify that here the alpha carbon should be the same for both the amino group and the carboxyl group. That is what I mean by alpha amino acids. And so that is the thing that makes these 20 uh, important amino acids common in structure. So to complete that, since carbon needs four bonds, we have two bonds already, there should be a hydrogen here and an R here, alright? And we know that R could mean some alkyl group, but later on we will know that there are specific R groups for the 20 amino acids. So what I want to say here is that all of this the alpha carbon in the two functional groups will always be present in all these 20 amino acids so this one is present in all of them this one is constant it doesn't change or it doesn't 
it should not be removed from the 20 amino acids we will discuss on later. And this one, this R group, alright, this R group is the only thing that's differing from the 20 amino acid or is the variable one, the only thing that's, that varies among the 20. So later when I discuss the amino acid, since anyway we have these in all amino acids, I won't draw the constant part anymore and I will just put this line here, right? Um, this sawtooth, wavy line, whatever you want to call it, and I'll just draw the variable loops. Anyway, they're the only things that differ the 20 amino acids from each other. Alright. Another thing that I would like to mention here is that if you look at the alpha carbon, the alpha carbon here is attached to four different substituents. So if you have a carbon um, bonded to four different substituents, um, in organic chemistry, there's a property, if you recall, that is imposed on this carbon and this property is known as optical activity. So if you're kind of recalling this term, telling yourself, hey, I remember this. Well, optical activity, again, is the ability to rotate a plane of polarized light. So in short, we would have isomers of this, actually we get enantiomers or mirror images of this one, alright? But here I would like to state that we're not going to talk anymore about optical activity but we're more on absolute configuration, meaning we just look at the structure, alright? We look at the structure and look at a particular component of that structure and if that structure is located somewhere, we give a designation of this and that and those two designations are D and L alright this is kind of the same as R and S alright or like right or left so the group that we're going to look at here is actually the amino group so this is the amino group in relation to the alpha carbon so if the amino group is at the right of the alpha carbon we assign D but if the amino group is at the left of the alpha carbon we assign L so looking at this structure I have drawn just here since this is the alpha carbon this is the amino group the amino group is at the left of the alpha carbon we have now here the L isomer of the alpha amino acid and I would like to note that the L all right, the L configuration of the amino acids are the one, are the ones that are seen or that that is encoded for by the genes of human species or by us. So these are the ones we have. All right. Rarely will we see amino acids in our bodies or in our proteins that are of the D isomer, all right, or of the D conformation. Okay. So unless the R group becomes H, which I will now draw, which is the first amino acid. Unless the R group is also H, okay, it will always have L or D isomers. But in case of this one, the name of this guy right here is glycine. Since we have two hydrogens here, it loses its optical activity. We cannot anymore assign D or L configurations because there won't be such. So glycine is the only one which we say is a chiral because another term, I would like to get back to this, another term for enantiomerism or acti optical activity is chirality, right, or handedness. So we say that glycine is the only a chiral amino acid of the 20, okay, and also the simplest since the R group is also a hydrogen. So that's it for the 20 L alpha amino acids that are important for biochemistry and so at the next video we will already start out with the individual amino acid structures.